Today we're back in the prompt book and we are going to be working on the prompt vampire. If you thought spooky season was over, you're very wrong. You are on Bentley House Minis and it is always spooky season. In case you're new here, the prompt book is a list of prompts. I made the book myself and I handpicked out all the prompt words. There is a list in the description box below if you want to see what the prompts are. And I've also put an X next to the ones that I've already done. Basically, this is just a fun series where I kind of stretch my creativity while I'm trying to come up with a miniature that will correspond to the word in the prompt book. Recently, I have been trying to do each prompt with another miniature channel. This prompt collab is with the Gothic Unicorn. I will link her channel and her video down below in the description. And at the end of this video, make sure you hop over there to check out what she made. So let's get started. Here is the prompt book with all the prompts inside. I always let my collab partner pick the word, but then I always have to search for it throughout the book because I don't have like a glossary or anything. I finally find it at the end and today's word is vampire, which is really fun. I love the vampire aesthetic and the vampire stories, so this is right up my alley. I always start out by drawing my ideas out first, and I already knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to make a vampire couch. In an old video I made quite a while ago, I made a vampire chair or throne, I guess you could call it, and a vampire baby carriage. And so I thought it would be fun since I have the opportunity to add to that already made furniture. And so maybe someday I will make them all together and put them into a scene. I sketched out the couch and a lamp. I wanted to make one extra thing to go with the couch. And then I also made sure to sketch out the back because I wanted to make it look as close to a coffin as possible. I'm going to be using matte board for this build. This is 1 16th inch matte board. It's the same stuff that they put inside of frames to frame artwork or photographs. But you could also use basswood or you could glue together some cereal box material to get the same thickness. The most complicated shape in this entire build is, of course, the coffin shape. So I'm going to show you how I drew that out. First, I made a rectangle that was six inches by two and a quarter inches, and I am going to include the millimeters on the graphic on the screen. Once I had my rectangle, I added dots around the rectangle with the measurements showing now, and that gave me the dots that I needed to trace to get my coffin shape. Now that I have it complete, I do end up making two of these. At the moment, I just have one, and then later on, I decide I need two. So go ahead and make two if you're following along. I'm going to be using a straight edge cutter to cut the rest of my mat board at a one inch thickness. This is going to make up the side walls of the coffin. I only need to cover four of one, two, three, four. Yeah, four <laughs> of the six walls. So I'm just cutting whatever I think I need to do that. I'm going to make it two layers thick. And then I'm also cutting several pieces that are a quarter inch thick because I do want to frame out the walls of the coffin. And so these are going to be my framing pieces. These could also be done with craft sticks. I'm using my absolute favorite tool, my easy cutter to chop through the mat board. It goes through it really easily. And I'm just trying to figure out the sizes as I go along and I'm lining it up onto the edge of my coffin, figuring out where I need to cut and then chopping the pieces. This makes the construction super duper easy. I will try my best to link any of the materials or tools that I use, well, as many as I can find in the description box below. Once I have the sizes cut that I need for the back wall of the couch, I'm going to glue them together because I want a double thickness. This is going to make the back wall of my coffin a lot stronger. I'm using something heavy to put on top. This is a one, two, three block. I'm going to do this for all four sides and then I'm going to leave the front two sides open because that's how we're going to make it into a couch. I'm just using tacky glue here and I'm gluing my walls on top of my coffin shape that I created previously. I just go slowly here making sure that each piece fits correctly and sanding it down if I feel like it's a little bit too big. 
Once these pieces are dry, I can go ahead and start adding the trim. Earlier I mentioned I wanted to frame out each piece. I think this gives it just a little bit more pizzazz and a little bit more interest to the plain box look of the coffin. And as I mentioned before, I decided to add a second piece to the base just to make my couch a little bit stronger. To start framing it out, I'm going to take my quarter inch thick piece of mat board and line it up along the long edge. Then I'm just marking where I need to cut it off. I'm going to chop it with my easy cutter, which makes it super easy, and then glue it on. By doing this, I'm also covering up a lot of the bare edges of mat board, giving it a more finished look. I'm again using tacky glue to attach all these pieces. Tacky glue works really well with mat board or wood. I'm just going to go slowly going around the entire coffin and then I'm going to do the same thing for the upper edge of the coffin as well. Once that's finished, I can add some vertical pieces as well. I want each side of the coffin to basically have its own little frame. So this means in a couple places they are going to be doubled up back to back and then on the ends they're going to just be a single piece. I will show you how that looks but I think as long as you think of it as a frame for each section that's how I kind of made it make sense in my head. Once I added all the vertical pieces this is how it looks. I also added one in the center because I felt like that space was really long, so I just added one in. So here is our finished body of the couch. I'm just going to give it a really gentle sand. When you're sanding mat board, make sure to sand away from the edge and not towards the edge because you can start to peel up the top paper, so just be really careful with that. Many of you may know I am not one to use gloss paint, but I thought if there was ever a time to use gloss paint, it would be for a sleek vampire's piece of furniture. And so I am using some gloss black acrylic paint to paint this entire couch. I think the gloss really starts to bring out the details that I created with the frame pieces and it does just make it seem more like an upscale piece of furniture when it's done. Now that that's done, we need to add some legs. So in order to add legs, I decided I wanted to use some barbecue skewer sticks. Uh, but I didn't want to drill into the coffin itself because the layers are so thin. So I found some beads that fit around the barbecue stick. And so that's why I, you know, like shish kebabs. Yeah, those. Um, I found some beads that fit around those and I'm going to glue them to the underside of the couch. And then the end of the barbecue skewer will fit into the little round beads and it will just give it a much more, let's see, a much stronger, more secure glue than if I just glued it straight onto the mat board. It just, it wouldn't, it wouldn't hold up. It would break pretty easily. So I cut off the legs at about an inch and a quarter, and that seemed to be about the right height for a 12th scale couch. What I'm going to use is Gorilla Super Glue Gel. The gel is really nice because it doesn't immediately leak all over the place like the liquid does. And I'm putting a little bit in each bead and then pushing the barbecue skewer stick, that's hard to say, barbecue skewer stick, <laughs> into the bead and letting it dry completely. I didn't touch it for several hours at this point. It's best to just let it dry. Now I'm going to add some black. I contemplated painting over the beads, but I thought it really helped the look, and so I just went with it. I thought the gold and the black looked really good together and kind of went with that vampire aesthetic. Before I had painted the body, I decided I wanted to make some round armrests coming out of either side of the couch. So I'm using chipboard, and that's the American word for just cereal box material. And because both sides are just a little bit different, I'm marking out the width that I need to create the armrests. And I'm using my straight cutter to just cut through the chipboard so that I have two pieces that are the correct width. Once I have the pieces I need, I can line them up and make sure I have it correct. I didn't have it right the first time. They're 
just slightly different sizes, but um, so I always check that first. To create the rounded part of the armrests, I'm just going to spritz the chipboard with a little bit of water and let that soak in. This is going to allow it to bend just a little bit easier without getting a crease or breaking. I'm using a mechanical pencil to start the roll, but I am going to make it just slightly smaller in the end. But this is just helping me get an even roll across the entire width. Once that's finished, I can go ahead and, well, clean up the mess first because you don't want to get any other part of your project into the water. But I'm going to glue the edge down and then I'm going to use some tweezers to hold it in place while it's gluing. This is going to be important so that once we get to the upholstering part, this part does not move at all. To clamp this, I'm just putting some tweezers inside to hold it, and then I'm going to clamp the tweezers itself. This makes it really easy to hold things that are hard to get an entire clamp inside of. Now I'm just going to check that I have the right height, and then I can cut off any excess length and save that material for a later project. So I like how this is looking. I think I'm going to have the armrest just kind of sit on top of the coffin. And so I'm ready to upholster. I had never upholstered anything like this before, but I think I found a way that works pretty well. So the side that my thumb is touching right now is the side that butts up against the couch. So that side will be hidden once it's glued. So I'm starting my fabric on that side and then making sure I press it up underneath the rounded piece so that it keeps its rounded shape. Then I can go over the rounded part to the back of the piece, which will be the side that you will see once it's glued to the couch. I know that I'm doing this in a black material and it's hard to see, but um, I hope my vocal directions make sense. Before I glue the side that is seen, I want to first cut the side that I first glued so that the fabric is flush with the sides of the chipboard. The reason for this is because I'm going to wrap the material that's on the seen side over the side that's on the unseen side so that it covers it up. <laughs> so hopefully this will make more sense once I do it. So now I've wrapped it over the curve and around and now it's really hard to see because it's just all black material. If you want me to do this again in the future so that it makes a little bit more sense with a better fabric, I totally will. Um, but basically I am adding some glue along the bottom edge and the unglued edge or the edge that you're going to see once it's glued onto the couch. I am wrapping it over the bottom and letting it take hold. Then I'm going to do the same for the sides. I am adding some glue and then wrapping it over so that once it's glued to the couch you will not see those edges. It is a really easy process but just it's unfortunate and I didn't realize till now because it's black fabric you can't see anything. To finish off the rounded part of the arm I'm just going to add a little bit of glue inside of the chipboard roll and then push the excess fabric that's left over inside and so it kind of looks like a bolster pillow once it's pushed inside and I'm going to do this on both sides and now we have an upholstered arm for our couch. And I did decide because those beads that I used for the legs was actually the perfect size to use these on either side of the arm to just create a little more detail and a little bit more interest because it was starting to be a lot of black on black, which is great for vampires, but can be a little bit hard to see what's going on. Here's the beads attached and I really think um, that that added a lot and it wasn't actually in my original plan. So I always love when something works out like that. I did that for both sides of the couch and so now the arms are finished. To create my couch cushion, I started with a chipboard copy of the same shape I used for the base of my couch. And then I cut down the sides to make room for the arms and then I cut the back down slightly to make room for the back of the couch. And basically I just trimmed it until it fit inside of my couch shape. Now I'm using some quilt batting. This is very big 
it's like queen size quilt bedding. I've been using it for years. I, I will try to find a link for this because I get a question every time about the um, quilt bedding. It's super nice to use to upholster in miniature. Basically, I just glued on several layers and then cut it down to the shape that's provided by the chipboard. And then once it's done, I'm just going to recheck to make sure that everything fits. The next thing I had to do was find a fabric for this couch and there's nothing better than a bright blood red pattern. And I also needed a few buttons because I wanted to make some divots into the cushion. And so I'm just using a Sharpie. I had these little tiny buttons. They were like a bluish color, but I didn't have any black. So I just took a Sharpie and then colored on top of the buttons. I also want to mark holes for where I am going to add the divots in. I keep saying divots, but it's tufting. And I remember that from a previous video, we were discussing what the correct terminology is. When it comes to furniture, it's tufting. So I am creating some pre-poked holes in the bottom of the chipboard to create the tufting because it's easier to just do that before I have the fabric on there. and. Um, yeah, you just want to make sure you pre-poke the holes. Thankfully, the straight edges along the coffin shape make this a really easy piece to upholster. All I'm going to do is add some glue. This is Fabri-Tac glue. You don't have to use this. You can use tacky glue, but I have enjoyed using Fabri-Tac for fabric type projects. And I'm just going to fold it over, trying to keep as straight a line as possible on the edges. And then I'm just going to keep going around. Actually, I'm going to do both sides first, and then I'll do the top and the bottom, making sure that I pull it as tight as possible uh, without deforming it. And if you have it pulled pretty tight, the tufting will look better in the end. If the fabric's too loose, you won't really be able to tell that there's much tufting going on. I'm using some black embroidery thread to thread through the buttons and I just divided them into two strands each because I have three buttons total and I put that through before I even put it onto my needle and then I'm going to take the two ends that are going through the button onto my needle so I have one end with the button on it and the other end are the loose ends. I'm poking up through the bottom of the upholstered cushion first so that I can kind of see where I need to go back down through the fabric. So it creates a small hole in the fabric and it gives me a guide of where I need to put my needle down through in order to create the tufting. So now my needle's going through and then I should be left with just a button on top and the loose ends are now on the lower side of the cushion. Once all three button strings are pulled through, I'm just going to pull it fairly tight, but not enough to make any of the fabric or anything pull through. And I'm going to add glue to the spot where the string is coming out, and then I just add some masking tape to hold it there until the glue has time to dry. And this has been my process for everything that I have tufted in the past, and it seems to work really well. I haven't had any buttons or any tufting come undone. So now we can test it in the vampire couch. And I think the red works really well. It makes me wonder if I should have done the arms in red or I don't know, maybe they look good in black. Um, but this can be done in so many different ways and so many different colors. But I think the red just really made this pop. Here's a close up of the buttons and now it is time to work a little bit more on the back. I want to put some handles because there would be handles on a coffin. To do this, I'm going to be using some cotton swabs, some strips of cardstock, and then I'm going to be hole punching, let's see, four, four holes or four hole punch pieces. There we go. You want the pieces that the holes create <laughs> and I'm going to need four of those per handle. I'm cutting my q-tip to the length I want my handle to be and I just kind of held it up to the side of my couch and decided how long I want it to be. There was no really rhyme or reason except that I want it to fit within the framed squares that I created on the back of the coffin. I also need to make the holes a double thickness. These are going to be the plates that hold the handle to the coffin. To double them up, I'm just adding a little bit of glue and sticking another one on top and allowing it to dry. 
so then I should end up with two circles, one stick, and then just to add a little bit of detail, this is not necessary, but I am going to be wrapping this thin strip of cardstock around the cotton swab piece that I cut for the handle just to create a little bit more detail and it's also going to be the areas which connect to the round circles that we previously created. To start the wrapping I just went ahead and pre-curved the ends of the cardstock and then I glued it to the cotton swab so that it would have time to dry. Then I did a test wrap to see how thick I wanted the ridge around the handle to be and then I cut it off evenly so both sides would have the same thickness. Then I added glue and just wrapped it around gently and held it until the glue was able to take hold. This resulted in a handle that had two ridges on either side and this is going to be where we glue it or where we glue the circles to the back of the handles. All I did was add a little bit of glue on top of each circle and now I'm using a tool to help me center the handle pieces on top of the circles. And I'm going to end up making three of these to go in the three framed sections on the back of the coffin. You could make something for the top and the bottom of the coffin as well if you like, but I just decided to make three handles. I'm doing a base coat of the same gloss black that I had done on the body of the couch and then I'm going to top it off with some metallic gold so that I can match the look of the beads that I've used for the legs and the front and back of the rolled arms. Here's how they look complete and now we can add them to the couch itself. Because I checked ahead of time, they all should fit really nicely in these three blank spots created by the frames on the back of the couch. I'm just going to glue those on with some tacky glue and voila, we have some handles on our coffin couch. I decided to make one more thing to go along with the couch and that is the lamp that was in my original sketch. I'm going to be using a barbecue skewer again but this time the point is going to be poking up. And I was thinking through what I could do to make the base of the lamp which is sometimes the hardest thing to do to get it straight and I looked over and noticed I had a bottle of glue that was nearly empty and I thought the top of the glue would be just about perfect. So I emptied the rest of the glue into another bottle and cleaned off the lid and this is going to be the base of my lamp. I did have to cut the glue lid just a little bit to make it large enough to fit the skewer inside but once I did it worked really nicely and I added some glue to the skewer and then made sure that it made contact with the inside of the glue lid. Then I added glue all around the base of the lid and to the skewer and I got a little square of cardstock that you can see there and I'm just going to attach it on there and then move my skewer until it is as straight up and down as possible. And so I'm just continually spinning this, making sure that it is straight up and down and it's not leaning to any side. The glue that's on the bottom of the skewer will help hold it in place once it's dry. Once it is dry, I can take some scissors and cut around the base, leaving just the base itself. Because the glue lid is plastic, I'm going to use some sandpaper and just go over the surface of it really gently, and this is going to help my first coat of paint take hold. I'm using the same glossy black paint to go over everything, so it has the same appearance as the couch. I want this to look like a matching set. While the lamp stand is drying, I'm going to go ahead and make the lamp shade. To do this, I'm using a pretty large circle, the inside of masking tape, to draw a circle on some black cardstock. And then I'm using a smaller circle, which was the paint that you saw, but I didn't feel like it was small enough. I'm just kind of winging this part. I'm sure there are some patterns that you can find online, but I just kind of was going with the flow here and I should have actually looked up a pattern because I don't end up liking the shape of my lampshade. But what I'm doing is cutting part of this donut shape and then it is going to be curved together and glued so that it makes a lampshade shape. It's kind of the same way you make like a skirt shape. I decided to cover the lampshade in the same material that I did the sofa in so it would really pop and match the set. 
I'm just adding a thin layer of tacky glue. You want to make sure if you're trying this that you keep your glue layers thin, otherwise the glue will soak through the fabric and it won't look very good. I'm going to glue that to the back of the fabric and then I'm going to cut around the shape of the lampshade but I'm leaving a very small edge. Some of these edges are going to be pushed over or basically upholstered just like I did earlier but I'm just using a very small amount. If I use a lot of fabric then it'll get really chunky. Once I cut all the way around the edge, I'm going to use my scissors to just carefully snip into the sides of the fabric. This is going to make it easier to fold over because I'll just be folding small sections of fabric instead of trying to fold the entire thing at once. I'm adding glue to the paper and then I will use my finger to fold it over and hold it until it takes hold and I don't have to worry about it coming undone. I'm going to do this for both the top and bottom edges of the lampshade, um, but not the sides yet. The sides I'm going to use to overlap in order to create the connection that finishes off the lampshade shape. Tacky glue will work for this step as well. I'm just adding a little bit to the fabric and then overlapping it. I wanted to add some details to this because I felt like it was a little plain compared to the couch. I'm using the same technique I've used several times where I pull at the edge of some fabric to create fringe. This works really well to make mini fringe. This is the same black fabric I used on the arms of the couch and now it's just fringed and I'm going to glue it around the inside of the lamp. I realize it's not very neat and tidy. I could probably go back and clean that up. I didn't really notice at the time. I also wanted to add some of the beads that I used on the couch and so I realized I could do that by adding it onto the lamp stand. I just added some glue and added the bead right at the top of where the glue cap is. I also added another bead at the very top and realized that this was going to be a great way to temporarily add my lampshade, which I'm thankful for because I didn't end up being that happy with it so I might have to redo it in the future. The spike characteristic becomes really helpful here because I realized to attach the lampshade I could very easily just attach a piece of string and then the spike could go up through the string, like through the middle of it separating the strands and then the lampshade would kind of sit on top of the spike and it, would, it wouldn't slide down because the bead was there holding it up. So that was kind of my makeshift plan for a temporary lampshade. It was at this point I decided I wasn't the happiest with the lampshade, so I did a couple things to try and fix it where what I should have done was redo it because it's the shape of it I'm not super happy with, <laughs> but I decided to try to add creepy cloth and I just I didn't like it so I just kind of pulled it all back out so we can just forget that that happened. And then I also decided, well, it's not, there's nothing like super vampire about it so I cut out some bats from some cardstock and unfortunately these were harder to take off. I think they're they're okay, they're cute. I just added some glue, added them around the bottom of the lampshade but I think it kind of made it look a little babyish maybe um, with the shapes on there. I don't know. I was I was trying to avoid remaking it when I should have just stopped and remade it, but that's okay. I think it works for this and because it's temporary, I can always redo it in the future and I think it works. It just kind of rounds out this set. We have a couch with a lampshade and so our vampire will be happy for now, I think. Here's the final look at what I built for Prompt Word Vampire. It was such a fun prompt. It's such a fun aesthetic. I want to make more along the whole vampire route. I really got into dark shadows at one point and I've always thought that would be a really, really fun project to do. If you would like to participate in prompt number 12, Vampire, make sure to tag your post on Instagram with hashtag BentleyHousePrompts or share on my Facebook page 
Bentley House Minis. And I will let you know, when I went to go get the prompts from last time, there was a message on Instagram that said all recent posts from all hashtags are temporarily hidden. And so there may be some that I missed. If I missed your prompt, please send it to me in a different way on Facebook or on Instagram or email so that I can include your beautiful creations. I love seeing what everyone creates based off of the prompts. They're always so different and always so inspiring to me. So please make sure that if I didn't get your prompt that you send it to me. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe if you want to see more, and leave a comment if you can think of some other vampire furniture that I need to make. As I said before, make sure you check out the gothic unicorn. She made something that I think the vampire that owned my couch would be a little bit nervous about. I hope you all have an amazing week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! It's like one of those DVD screens, but with my glasses. Can I line it up in the corner? Dunk. 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 Oh! oh. <laughs> Alright. Alright, let's quit while we're ahead. <laughs>